actions and people are interconnected. For instance, there is a consumer demand for more products. Retailers decide to meet this demand, which increases the demand for resources. Resources are necessary to meet a consumer's needs. But if we take too many resources, our environment will struggle to provide them in the future. Entity models aim to navigate what entities can do. An entity can be anything from a small, single-celled organism to the entire cosmos. These models shape the boundaries that outline their limits. Thrive's logo, a Chambella chart, outlines two important boundaries for humanity to adhere. These boundaries are a social floor, denoting the minimum for an entity's survival, and an environmental ceiling, where too many resources are taken from the environment. This environmental ceiling is where the environment can no longer recover from the damage, which can deprive entities of what they need to survive. Even removing a single tree, while it might have little impact on the environment as a whole, can devastate the creatures that depend on it for survival. The greater our actions, the more entities we impact. Ecosystems may be ruined if too many organisms suffer, and significantly damaged ecosystems could endanger us all. So how do we reduce our impacts? Buy only what you need. Reuse products. Recycle what you're finished with. Within the systemic holistic model, the scope considers the complex, wicked nature of the problem and entity being examined. The entity model forms one of Thrive Framework's 12 foundational focus factors. It is a credible, measurable and implementable transformation mechanism that addresses the current crisis, pushing us beyond sustainability and towards thriveability thereby ensuring that present and future generations can enjoy a sustainable society and thrivable future.